Sometime after these things occurred, someone told Joseph, Behold, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, and went to Goshen. When Jacob was told, Your son Joseph was come to you, Israel collected his strength and sat up in the bed. Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Bethel in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply, and I will make you multiply a multitude of people and will give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now, and now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt, before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. Um, as Reuben and Simeon shall be mine. But other sons who may be born after them shall be your own, and they shall be called after the names of these two brothers, reckoned as belonging to them into their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Badan, Rachel died at my side in the land of Canaan on the way, when yet there was but a little way to come to Arapheth. And I buried her there on the way to er Erephrath, that is Bethlehem. When Israel, almost blind, saw Joseph's sons, he said, Who are these? And Joseph said to his father, They are my sons, whom God has given me in this place. And he said, Bring them to me, I pray you, that I may bless them. Now Israel's eyes were dim from age, so that he couldn't see. And Joseph brought them near to him, and he kissed and embraced them. Israel said to Joseph, I had not thought that I would see your face, but see, God has shown me your offspring also. Then Joseph took the boys from his father's embrace and he bowed before him with his face to the earth. And Joseph took both boys, Ephraim with his right hand toward Israel's left and Manasseh with his feet, his left hand toward Israel's right and brought them close to him. And Israel reached out his right hand and laid his hand on Ephraim who was on the younger at his left at his left hand on Manasseh's head, crossing his hands intentionally for Manasseh was the firstborn. When Jacob blessed Joseph and said, God himself before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac lived and walked habitually, God who has been my shepherd and has led and fed me from this time I came into being into this day. The redeeming angel, that is the angel, the redeemer, not a created being, but the Lord himself who has redeemed me continually from every evil, bless the lads and let my name be perpetuated in them. May they be worthy of having their names coupled with mine and the names of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them become a multitude in the midst of the earth. When Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on Ephraim's head, it displeased him when Joseph saw that. It displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to move it to Manasseh's head because it was like this. It's like he crisscrossed. And Joseph said, no, not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put your right hand upon his head. But, jo fa but his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also shall become a people and shall be great but his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his offspring shall become a multitude of nations. Now this same thing happened to Jacob, and that might be why Joseph thought that, because he knew his father went through the same thing where the younger was head over the, the older. And he blessed them that day, saying, By you shall Israel bless one another, saying, May God bless you like Ephraim and like Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I am about to die, but God will be with you and bring you again to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you, Joseph, one portion, Shechem, one mountain slope, more than any of your brothers, which I took, reclaiming it out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. So God will bring them back to the land again after, after he dies. 
and praise the Lord, he gave him one mountain slope, one of one portion, Shechem, one mountain slope, more than any of the other brethren, which I took reclaiming it. So he fought for that other land. He took it from the Amorites with his sword and his bow, and he's given it to Joseph, his, his, the one that he loved so much, more than his other sons. And what a blessing it is when the parents give to their children. What a blessing that is. It says, a good man will leave an inheritance for his children's children. But how do you do that? But you need to have the ability to get it. You have to know how to get it. And he was able to take it out of, out of, um, you know, the Amorites, which were not a good people. Okay. And that's another thing. The just are the money, the, um, money or the, the wealth is being laid up for the just by the unrighteous. God is leading, heaping up money for the righteous and it's coming out of the hands of the unrighteous into the hands of the righteous. There's a transfer of wealth, praise God. Okay, now 49. And Jacob called for his sons and said, gather yourselves together round about me that I may tell you what shall befall you in the latter or the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, you sons of Jacob, and hearken to Israel, your father. Now he's going to pronounce a blessing over each child. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, the beginning and of my manly strength and vigor. Your birthright gave you the preeminence in dignity and the preeminence in power. But unstable and boiling over like water, you shall not excel and have the preeminence of the firstborn because you want you went to your father's bed and defiled it he went to my couch Simeon and Levi are brothers equally head headstrong deceitful vindictive and cruel their swords are weapons of violence oh my soul come not into their secret counsel into their assembly let not my honor be united for I knew nothing of their plot because of their anger, they slew men and honored man, Shechem and the Shechemites, and their self-will, they disabled oxen. So it's not just a blessing. It's pronouncing what they are. Basically, it's pronouncing what they are. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Judah, you are the one whom your brothers shall praise your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies your father's son shall bow down to you judah a lion's a lion's cub with the prey my son you have gone high up on the mountain he he stopped down he crouched like a lion and like a lioness who dares provoke and arouse him the scepter of leadership shall not depart from judah nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until shiloh the messiah the peaceful one comes to whom it belongs and to him shall be the obedience of the people, binding his foal to the vine and his donkey's colt to the choice vine. He washes his garments in vine, wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker and more sparkling than wine and his teeth whiter than milk. Zebulun shall live toward the seashore and he shall be a haven and a landing place for ships, and his border shall be toward Sidon. Ishgar is a strong bond, donkey crouching down between the sheepfolds, and he saw that rest was good and that the land was pleasant, and he bowed his shoulder to bear his burden and became a servant to tribute, subjected to forced labor. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel, Dan shall be a serpent by the way, a horned snake in the path that bites at the horse's heels so that his rider falls backward. I wait for your salvation, O Lord. Gad, a, ri a raiding uh, tro stro troop shall raid him, but he shall raid at their heel and assault them victoriously. Asher's food supply shall be rich and fat, and he shall yield and deliver royal delights. Naphtali is a, is a hind let loose, which yields lovely fawns. Joseph is a fruitful bow, a fruitful bow by a wellspring of fountain whose branches run over the wall. 
Skilled archers have bitterly attacked and sorely worried him. They've shot at him and persecuted him, but his bow remained strong and steady and rested in the strength that does not fail him. For the arm of his hands were made strong and active by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob, by the name of the shepherd, the rock of Israel, by the, the God of your father who will help. These are prophecies. This prophecy begins to be fulfilled from the days of the judges onward. So these are prophecies. Um, okay. By, by the God of your father, who will help you, and by the Almighty, who will bless you, with blessing of the heavens above, blessings lying in the deep beneath, blessings of the breast of the womb, the blessings of your father on you are greater than the blessings of my forefathers, Abraham and Isaac, on me, and, and are a lasti as lasting as the bounties of the eternal hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him who was the consecrated one, and the one separated from his brethren, and the one who is prince among them. Ah, oh, that's the whole thing for Joseph. And he also said even more, the blessing of your father on you are greater than the blessings of my forefathers, Abraham and Isaac, on me. So wow, that's a big blessing. And are as lasting as the bounties of the eternal hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him who was the consecrated one. And the one separated from his brethren and the one who is prince among them. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf in the morning, devouring the prey and at night dividing the spoil. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is what their father said to them as he blessed them, blessing each one according to the blessing suited for him, like prophesying to them about them and who they are. So it is a prophecy and it is a, a blessing. And also what was cool is he said, even more than Abraham and Isaac, you're, you are blessed even more than I was. I mean, they, he was blessed by Isaac and Abraham, but now he's blessing his son, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he said, and Jacob is saying, Joseph, you are the most blessed, even more than I was to my mom, my father and grandfather. So, um, and he earlier had said that he lived not as long as them, he didn't live as long as them or as much, you know, that he put into life. But the way we are here nowadays, we see life as 120 is pretty good long life. And God gives us 120 years. That's a promise. And that's in Genesis, the beginning of Genesis. He charged them and said to them, I, I am to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my father in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave, in the field of Machpelah, east of Mamre, in the land of Canaan, that Abraham bought, along with the field of Ephron, the Hittite, to possess as a, as a cemetery. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife, and there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field in the cave that is in it was from the sons of Heth. When Jacob had finished commanding his sons, he drew his feet up to his bed and breathed his last and was gathered to, to his people. He breathed his last and he lived 147 years. And I, I realized he didn't have his his uh, Rachel with him because she had died on the way coming in. And so she, she was not with him, with him where he died. I mean, they buried Abraham and Sarah. That's where he wanted to lay, where Abraham and Sarah were, his grandparents, his wife, Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebecca, his dad and his mom, and his wife, and then he buried Leah, so he didn't have Rachel with him because on the way into town, she had died. Okay, chapter 50. 
Then Joseph fell upon his father's face, and he wept over him, and he kissed him. And Joseph ordered his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel the way he wanted to be. And 40 days were devoted to this pure purpose for him. For this is the customary number of days required for those that are embalmed, 40 days. And the Egyptians wept and bemoaned him as they would for royalty for 70 days. They, they wept as well. Oh, God bless Joseph. He fell upon his father's face and he wept over him and kissed him. That's so touching. Uh, it's neat because while we're reading this, every day I think about it. And now it's like in my mind, it's always through my mind. I'm thinking about, wow, I feel like I'm there, like part of that family. part, And we are, we're part of the family of God. And remember, we're all going to be in heaven together. We are the family of God. And so when one goes off, that means they're just departing. They're just going into, from one address to the next. They're just departing from one to the next, you know. And But it's us that miss them so much. And when the days of weeping and deep grief were past, Joseph said to the nobles of the house of Pharaoh, If now I have found grace in your eyes, speak, I pray you, to Pharaoh. For Joseph was dressed in mourning, and could not do so himself, saying, My father made me swear, saying, I am about to die in my tomb, which I hewed out for myself in the land of Canaan. There you shall bury me. So now let me go up, I pray you, and bury my father, and I will come again. And Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father, and he made you swear. And Joseph went up to Canaan to bury his father, and with him went all the officials of Pharaoh, the nobles of his court and the elders of his house and all the nobles and elders of the land of Egypt, all the household of Joseph and his brethren and his father's household, only their little ones and their flock and herds they left in the land of Goshen. And there went with Joseph both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. And they came up to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond the Jordan, and there they mourned with great lamentation and extreme demonstration of sorrow, according to the Egyptian custom. And Joseph made a mourning for his father seven days. See, I think it's good to just get it all out, right? That 70 days, you just take that time and you get it all out. And then you rejoice because you know you're going to see them again and you rejoice for their life that they lived. When the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the morning at the floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous morning for the Egyptians. Therefore, the place was called the morning of Egypt, of Abel Mizraim. It is the west of the Jordan. It is to the west of the Jordan. The, that, thus Jacob's sons did as he had commanded them. For his sons carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, east of Mamre, which Abraham bought along with the field for a possession as a burying place from Ephron the Hittite. And that was his grandfather, Jacob's grandfather. After he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, he and his brethren and all who had gone up with him. So Joseph laid his his dad Jacob to rest. When Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, perhaps now Joseph will hate us and will pay us back for all the evil we did to him. And they sent a messenger to Joseph saying, your father commanded before he died saying, so shall you say to Joseph, forgive, take up and away all resentment and all claim to requital concerning i pray you now the trespass of your brothers and their sin for they did evil to you now we pray you forgive the trespass of the servants of your father's god and joseph wept when they spoke this to him now jacob didn't say that they just were afraid that he was going to turn on them but he had no ambition to do that he wasn't going to turn on them he had already brought them all into the family to the to the um to be saved from famine, he had already loved them and forgiven them. He wasn't planning on that, but they were afraid for themselves, thinking, now that my dad's dead, you know, he might come after us, but no. 
So, but anyway, Joseph wept when they spoke this. He, his heart was just after his father just now, dying. Then his brothers went and fell down before him, saying, Go, see, we are your servants. And Joseph said to them, Fear not, for I am in the place of God. Vengeance is his, not mine. Oh, am I in the place of God? I'm not in the place of God. Vengeance is his, not mine. As for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good. Oh, then he saw, he did see. As for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good. Because he saw that back then, they meant it for good, for evil when he was sold as a slave. But God is saying, but God meant it for good, is what Joseph is telling them. And to bring about many people should be kept alive as they are to this day, because he basically saved a nation. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and support you and your little ones. And he comforted them imparting cheer, hope, and strength. And he spoke to their hearts kindly. Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's household. <coughs> Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's household. And Joseph lived 110 years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation. Wow, he was a great, great grandfather. The children also of Machir, son of Manasseh, were brought up on Joseph's knee. And Joseph said to his brethren, I am going to die, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land, just as Jacob had said to him, his father, that God is going to, and God told Jacob, I'm going to bring you all back. And, and Jacob told Joseph to bring everybody back. And now Joseph is saying, <clears throat> But God will visit you and bring you out of the land, this land. He swore he will bring you out of this land to the land he swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you. And Joseph took an oath from the sons of Israel saying, God will surely visit you and you will carry up my bones from here. And Joseph died being 110 and they embalmed him and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. So he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Later on, we find out that his bones were taken, but we're gonna watch that. So praise the Lord, there's so much in these. I can't really go into them. I just know that God has given us so much here to, to listen to and dwell on. And um, number one, that they lived so long that God has given us that 120 year promise and that's what we should go for and believe for and speak and eat the way God has shown us to eat and do the things he just leads us to do being happy not holding grudges you know there's a lot to this getting in our word just staying in the word and knowing what God is saying daily he gives us the word daily but we got to get in it and that's why we're doing fortunate so we get in it and we're learning and these these lessons are definitely lessons in these stories. So many lessons here. I mean, the way they even said, you know, not to, you know, not to hurt up, not to, you know, hold something against us. And he said, oh, he cried and he said, you know, and God put me here for, for this time. You meant for evil. God meant for good. It's okay. The love, the, the, the dealing, the time together, the healing, the the generations, the, <coughs> the generations, <coughs> the fact that they were all spoken a word over by their dad, Jacob, um, Ephraim, and Manasseh, how they were blessed, but the younger is going to serve the older or be, be the leader of the older one. Um, these are all just so wonderful, these stories. There's a lesson in each story, and I just pray that you'll get them and that you'll catch on, that the Holy Spirit will give them to you as we're reading them, as you're getting them, as you're highlighting, as you're reading them with me. You're highlighting, you're writing in there. Just receive from God every day, and he's given us words, he's given us wisdom, and he's given us his truth. So we have wisdom, we have truth, 
we have wisdom and we have his word. And we want to just praise you, Lord, and thank you right now. I'm going to say goodbye till tomorrow. Remember, your words are your way to victory.